Yes, you are listening to me. I am Childrick. This is my podcast, and this is episode 37. 37 glorious episodes. Now, today, we've got breaking news. Trump foe and Mueller linked New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, accused of beating and choking women in bed. Yikes, this guy. Uh, uh, for the Huffington Post warned his Twitter followers that a huge story about one of Trump's foes is about to drop. <laughs> about to drop that mixtape. <laughs> so this guy, apparently, New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, who was ironically an outspoken person in the hashtag Me Too movement, and now he's being accused of beating and choking women. Now, this guy is a longtime Trump foe. And he had filed a lawsuit against Donald Trump uh, right after Trump had announced his run for uh, president. And he alleged or alleges that Donald Trump uh, scammed Trump University participants out of tens of thousands of dollars. Well, so this... So, so Mueller... Special Counsel Mueller uh, began working with the anti-Trump New York Attorney General in August to take down the president. Yes, they were trying to take him down. And this guy was working with Mueller, yes. Now, it looks like, and there's got to be a list. Somebody's got to be taking these names down of people who have come out against Trump full on with all kinds of whatever, frivolous lawsuits or or just any type of thing that they could do just to get at him in any way possible. It's got to be like a list. But now you can add this guy's name to the list. Uh, it's really sad, but every time somebody comes out against President, President Trump, uh, everything that they do ends up coming right back on them. Well, that's odd. <laughs> so Schneiderman is uh, facing a reckoning of his own. He was a prominent voice against sexual misconduct. Now he's got several women uh, accusing him of abuse. One woman sa uh, who accused Schneiderman of abuse says he hit her so hard on the ear that she fell back on the bed. She heard a gurgling sound and had blood dripping out of her ear, prompting her to go to an ear, nose, and throat specialist. Right. Okay. One of the women who was abused by Schneiderman says he got absolutely plastered almost every night. Oh, well, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, his behavior makes sense. But so have you noticed that these people, this is another one of these liberal, these are the lefties. These are liberals. These are the ones that are, that are, guiding this narrative of a war on women. And this is, this is the guy that's in the, this is the kind of stuff that this guy's doing. And have you noticed the biggest liberal supporters of women are the biggest, are, are the ones with the most to hide? I mean, these guys, man, I tell you what, it just, they, uh, fiction, uh, you couldn't make this stuff up. You could not make this stuff up. And if, to be honest with you, I never, uh, I remember hearing about the story, um, about the Trump University story, but these are the guy, the, what? This is the guy? We, I mean, there's a level of, of absurdity on the, on the left and there's a double standard, a clear double standard. Okay. Like nobody's getting prosecuted for crimes that they are that clearly they're committing. They're committing these crimes in public. It's not like it's a secret, you know. It's not like these like well, we don't know if they've done it yet. It's it's take John Kerry for example. Calls are getting louder. In fact, today Ted Cruz came out and said that John John Kerry is openly violating the Logan Act, and it's something that they should take a fresh look at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
yeah. So what's really telling about these people? So they 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 do these things. These are lo- these are laws that they're breaking. Okay, they're breaking the law, and these people think that they're above the law. And you know what's funny is they don't have any substance to anything that they do. Like literally, if you just started arresting people, they would shut up. They would just shrivel up and oh oh dear, I'm being arrested. What for? What a travesty! Yeah, the travesty is is that you're you're doing you're actually violating these acts. These you're you're committing treasonous acts. Okay, attempting to undermine the current duly elected president of the United States and his foreign policy. Uh, it's like these people got fired, but they keep, <laughs> they keep showing up for work. Uh, Obama did the same thing. He went to Korea right after right, we we went through this a couple episodes ago. These are violations of the Logan Act. This is treason. It's actually that's what they're not allowed to do. And there's a really aside from the fact that they are interfering in. Uh, the current administration's foreign policy, okay? They're, these people are act- actually acting to undermine his foreign policy around the world, okay? And and they want to they want to get this continuance of what they had been working on the last eight years or whatever. And I've gone through this on previous episodes as well. These people have a false sense of of they're going to be the ones that are going to usher in a new era, a new world order. That's what they think. That's what they think. They're completely wrong, by the way. They're completely wrong. They like to go into areas where there is a a weak government, and they like to threaten them and cajole them to do their bidding, to do things that they wouldn't otherwise want to do. And so this whole Iran deal is ill-formed, okay? There's nothing about it that is right. I mean, you're literally, somebody says, these people say they want to destroy the United States of America and Israel, wipe us off the face of the planet. And Obama and Hillary and John Kerry have done nothing but work to uh, ensure that they have the weapons to make that a reality. (laughs) How, How is that not treason? How are you, uh, are these people not traitors? And if you are a liberal and you are listening to this program, first of all, uh, good for you. Good for you. Um, I don't hate you as the person, but I hate the fact that you are willing to accept this kind of, of activity. Is that what you're about? Is that, is that what you're about? You're with them, you're with them. They're committing treason and you're with them. I mean, I would love to have you explain yourself. Explain why you're backing these people. These people are guilty of crimes, serious crimes, crimes that they could hang for, crimes that they could be, uh, get the death penalty for. (laughs) Hillary Clinton, even as much as, as acknowledged that in her emails that were leaked via WikiLeaks. So I'm just asking, I'm just asking, is that what you're down for? Is that, is that, you know, I don't, I don't mind if you have an alternate opinion, if you have a differing view on some minor technical budget deal or whatever, that's one thing or taxes or whatever, but you guys are like literally like going in the wrong direction. And if I were you, I think about reining it in a little bit. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Now it isn't Donald Trump that's doing this to you. Okay. And, and you shouldn't be, think it a strange thing. This, this, oh no, the, the, you know, it's Trump. Trump is, is going to, he's not going after you. He's upholding the law. The law is what you've broken. He didn't, he didn't do something against Donald Trump. You, you broke the law. And not only that, you've, you've assisted an avowed enemy of the United States. So what did you expect was going to happen? What did you expect was going to happen? On to bigger and better things. So I guess Hillary is uh, stepping out with a back brace on. And there's pictures from different angles of her with this back brace. She's propped up or whatever. I got to be honest with you. I got to be honest with you at this point. I'm going to be really disappointed if it isn't revealed that Hillary Clinton is a cyborg robot. 
okay, I'm going to be really disappointed. I mean, that thing, that back brace better be connected to her spine, like screw with screws or, or titanium rods or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> that communicates from the right side to the left. I mean, some kind of, it's got to be some kind of crazy thing. And then like, because then that would make sense all that, the time she uh, stumbled walking down the stairs or fell in the shower or whatever, short-circuited or whatever. See, I'm, uh, that would make sense, all of her fainting spells and stuff like that. Now, granted, when you are at that level, when you're running for president of the United States, there is a level of stress involved, okay? So lots of worries, lots of things to be worried about. But Hillary made all of the things that she had to worry about. She made those things. The leaks, the emails, the Benghazi, the, man, just the laundry list. It's just, it's a huge list. <laughs> I could go on this entire episode and probably the next four or five episodes on how terrible these people are. Like, and I don't mean they're terrible, like in their own person or character or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. I know a lot of people go and say, well, you just hate her. No, this is what I hate. What I hate is incompetence, especially at high levels of government. And I also hate the fact that, that somebody has acted incompetently and everyone wants to cover up for her. And in covering up for her, they all act incompetently. Okay, it's like the worst thing. It's the worst thing. Because not only has she been caught doing things that she should not have been doing, now, now, everybody's like going to take one for her team when it's clear where she's going. She's going to prison. Or worse, according to her. It may even be worse. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh. Yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on this because these people are going to be um, uh, injecting fodder into the mainstream that we'll be talking about for a long time to come. <laughs> and we'll think, be thinking about it. And we will be, yeah, this is going to be around for a while. Uh, the people who have done these things may not be, uh, whether that's what, by old age or whatever. But I'm just saying that these people are, are straight up crackpots, weirdos. They have no business being anywhere near Washington, anywhere near federal government, anywhere near state, local, whatever. These people. And it's, it's strange that she, that this woman could elicit that much fear in top FBI agents. I mean, when you're an FBI agent, you're, you've got some training, you know, and you do a hard job. And you stay with the bureau and you work your way up and you get to the upper echelons of management and, and directorships. And, and those people were scared of this woman. Like I said, she better be some type of cyborg robot. I'm just saying. In other news in other parts of the world, I guess Canada is still having a problem with immigration. Now, they've had a problem with immigration for, for quite some time now, but... The problem is that now people in Canada are actually going, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, that thing where you're just letting people just roll through here and they're they're jumping on a plane from Africa and flying into the United States, into New York, and then just walking across the border into Quebec. Yeah, so apparently they figured this out and they don't really appreciate that too much. They don't really appreciate that too much. So, yeah. Uh, and so it's a crisis that they're creating. And so they move them, they get those people that are in there. It's costing them money because those people go directly on to, to state assistance that's paid for by the hardworking taxpayers of Canada. And they go right on the assistance and they don't pay anything into the system for years. They just take money out of the system for years. Now, Trudeau, his cabinet, and all his, all his, you know, his, his good old boys club, okay? These guys are all school chums, man. These are all buddies. Now, we've, we've seen some really smart people come out of universities, okay? Bill Gates, you got Paul Allen, you got, I mean, and they didn't, you know, not all, not all these people finished. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, pretty smart guy, you know, excellent with the computers and, what, and whatnot, good with a calculator probably. I don't know that. He probably uses an abacus, a talking abacus, one that actually listens to every word that people say. 
spies on them and then apologizes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I spied on you. I, well, well, don't do it again. I, I, I won't. Will. I will. No, but Trudeau and his his group of guys, Gerald Butts, you know, the guy that, you know, calls everybody in his... <laughs> calls everybody Nazis. Hey, where's a Nazi? You disagree with me? You're a Nazi. What a bunch of weirdos, okay? Like, these guys don't know what they're doing. Like, look, I've said this many, many times on this podcast. How the government operates is a known thing. It known It's known how economics works. It's known how the government works. And these people want so bad to affect some type of change which is going to derail the current status of the government. And I know why they're trying to do it. And I know why they're trying to do it. Uh, and I'm sitting back here and I'm thinking to myself, I I'm, actually, I'm actually just laughing. I'm laughing at them. Uh, like, we're all getting big chucks out of it. You know what I mean? We're chuckling hard. Because... These guys are working overtime to dismantle something <laughs> that their predecessors before them, everything that they've built up to this point in those same positions, they have to dismantle it. And they're working overtime to, to undo everything, undo everything. And once again, we have this liberal ideology, this liberal mind disease. These people are like, we're going to be the ones. We're going to be in power. <laughs> um... Yeah, no, no, you're not, no. And I know it's coming, okay? And I know that Canadians are probably like, well, who's going to stop? Somebody's got to stop. Because I see them, they're more and more on Twitter every day, more and more on YouTube. Somebody's got to stop. Trudeau, stop, the, stop that man. <laughs> so Trudeau is like, the direction that he's going right now, he's making the biggest mistake ever. And it's a miscalculation, and it all has to do with something that he would have had to have taken care of before he started out on this little tour of his to dismantle Canada. And it's funny. It's funny. So, and when you hear about it, you'll laugh. When you hear about it, you will laugh. You'll be like, what? Oh, yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, But it's coming. It's coming. So I don't have any respect for, you know, that. I don't have any respect for somebody who could screw up that bad. Whether it's by incompetence, ignorance, uh, you know, I don't care. But he said some things and his his actions have reinforced what he had said. And that is that he favors a pure dictatorship, of course. Of course he does. Uh, people that don't have any authority, actual authority, do favor that. And in a vacuum, see, that all of the world's problems are boiled down to these people making problems where, where no problem existed before. And they do this so that they can be the ones that you are forced to have fixed this problem. That keeps them in control. They have to have that to be in control. If you look at what they do through that lens, you will find that, wait a minute, they've made up all of these problems. Europe, it, they imported a bunch of voters and made the problems for themselves. They didn't, their economy did not boom because of it. And, and you know what the deal is. You know what the deal is. They're looking at the United States and they're like, oh, we're going to be just like the United States. We're going to challenge the power of the United States. That's, that's what they're trying to do. That's what this whole thing is about. Get more people. Because they think that the, the size of the economy is based on the population. If we can just have enough people. But they refuse to look at examples of where that's not the case. Like Russia is one of them. Russia is one of them. Iran is another one. And I know a lot of people would be like, well, yeah, well, what about the sanctions? Yeah. So whatever you see in those countries and whatever they're able to, they're, they're able to uh, build. They're doing that on their own economy. Now they may be minus a few things, a few, you know, strategic metals or whatever. Maybe. And maybe their ability to research and, and do research and development and um, design and stuff like that. Perhaps the brain trust, uh, might be lessened, but you know, you're talking about a couple hundred million people between the two countries there, a couple hundred million. Okay. That's almost that in and of itself is almost the size of the United States. Plus with Russia, they have unlimited resources. If they can just get their people out there to tap it, you know, they, they, it's ridiculous. So 
So it's not based on population. And so the other thing is, is that there's this other phenomenon that's been sweeping through liberal circles, and that is mixing people. If you get the right mix of people, your nation will just spontaneously become just like the United States. And so that's where we get this migrant crisis, because they're trying to mix a certain type of people together to make a super race. How dumb? How dumb? That's not even how it works. It's not even how it works. But they, now they've screwed it up. Now they've, now they've screwed up what was there. And how can you get anything done? It's good to do. How can you get any of that done? When you have to deal, when you're basically all your money is going out to people who are newly arriving, causing problems. Um, they've got to be on the dole for years. They're constantly taking other people's money, you know, uh, taxpayers' money. So you have less people uh, paying taxes. There's less jobs. The migrants come in. There's no jobs for them. It's absurd. It's absurd. You see protests against Emmanuel Macron in France. The workers there are upset. It's, this is the guy that wants to be the leader. You know, he's going to be the first guy to tell you, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're, these guys want to take down the, they, this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to take down the old guard because they think that if they take down the old guard, then they can be the ones that can rule. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. There are millions of people. Okay. Millions of people. For thousands of years, as the lands have been owned and operated and combined and firmly established into territories, states, nations, provinces, the ownership of the land, the actual eminent domain ownership of the land, has been thoroughly uh, kept. And where they couldn't... Uh, make use of the land, they would tax that. Now, I'm not going to get into this whole thing about kings and queens. There's good ones, bad ones, whatever. The point is, is that the whole idea is based on the fact that once the population had become, uh, had gotten to a certain point, there was no longer any way to represent the value of the property amongst all of the descendants of that person who originally owned it. And so what they would do is the they would start with the oldest one who has the greater right. Okay. And they would, uh, promote them to a status where they were leader over the totality of everything. So he would become the leader of the people as well as the title holder to the land. And so that the people, his siblings or his sibling lines would be working the land and living on the land and building the, the culture and society and doing all of those things. And this person would be over all of them. So he had the land, the people, and the, he's the oldest authority of the people. And, and so that is what a king and a queen is. It's the person who, who is known to have had that status. Now, like I said, there's good ones and there's bad ones. There's people that, you know, were, were terrible at it. I mean, you get that in politics today. You get people that come in that are liberal and they really suck at politics. They're, they're, they're crap. They don't know what they're doing with government and they got no business being there. And then you got like Republicans who are like, they know pretty much what they're doing. They realize how, you know, to be fiscally responsible, but yet then they do other things that are just like, they, they're, they kind of waffle on things that they shouldn't waffle on, but whatever point is. There's different, there's different styles. Okay. Different styles. Same thing with Kings and Queens, different styles, different dispositions and different circumstances. Okay. So a number of things go into it, but the point that I'm, that I want you to take away from it, from this is that there, that this setting where the, they make this elder line, the status, the oldest status, uh, it's just like if, uh, you have siblings and you're, maybe you're a middle child or you're a, you know, you're an only, your oldest sibling is the one that takes priority and after them then you inherit and so on and so forth and so over thousands of years this has been going on and it started when the people dispersed into the various different places and those people groups began those families began to grow and as they grew they they um, took more and more territory because the uh, the the people needed the land to farm <laughs> so they have this status. There's a status there. Now, there's a number of nations who um, 
had took issue with the fact that their um, special status person, king or queen or whatever, uh, wasn't doing their job and they killed him. And so an interesting fact is, is that um, some of those countries are right now having a problem um, in Syria. They're, all of those countries that are involved in Syria right now are countries that have gotten rid of their title holder. You got the Russians, the Romanovs, you've got, you know, the, you know, Iranians, the, the, the Shah, the French, you know, and the Middle East is no, they've been, they'll let somebody rule for a while, especially the, the Arabs, they'll let somebody rule for a while and then they'll just be like, nope, today's the day, you're gone. And then they bring in a new guy. And they are, they are, <laughs> so it's been going on like that in the Middle East for quite some time. And so, so that's the point. The point is, is that, is that, why do you think that is, that all of those particular countries are getting locked into that region, in that region of the world? All of those countries that have that same thing about them, why are they there? Gives you pause. So, something to think about. In our day and age, since the United States has been uh, extremely successful, it's something that often other nations want to duplicate. The problem is, is that the other nations can't duplicate it because of those aforementioned um, authorities that they've dismissed or dispensed with. And that's why they can't do that. You see, the United States is founded on a firm authority. And the people that constitute the individuals that are, and the families and the groups of people, the people groups in it, the ethnic groups and, and the original founding families and the native families, this is a thorough ownership and their agreements are thorough. And that's why the United States prospered. And we don't think anything about, we don't think about those types of things, the kings and queens and stuff like that. We have them, we have them, we just don't, you know, we take turns. If you can get elected, you know, you be the you can be the one to administrate, but you're a servant of the people. Okay? You're not a king, you're not a queen. So like with Hillary, she was going around like saying, Well, it was her turn. It's my turn, it's my turn. And so this is this entitled attitude. Like she thinks she's a queen. It's it's really weird, actually. It's really odd to see that she's <laughs> like, <laughs> gone that far off the deep end. It's a strange thing for sure. Now, so there, it's different here. But so this, the, what they want is the success. They want the power. They want the authority and they want the, so it comes also, that stems from a fundamental misunderstanding of how the world is put together. And it's a faulty idea, fault as a false ideology that you can conquer a territory. <laughs> can't conquer it. You can't just roll in and take it and and have that land prosper. You can't have land prosper that's stolen. So if if those leaders in all of these various countries, all these liberals, if they have ever figured this out, that is cause, so because that's not how it works. That is not the power. It's not just a the money's not the power. <laughs> This is so funny because the money that they get, Clinton spent over a billion dollars. Well, and that didn't get her anywhere. Okay. It didn't, it didn't get her anywhere. Clinton Foundation makes in millions and millions and millions of dollars from, I don't know who gives these people money. It's ridiculous, but they give her money. It's weird. It's weird. It's got to be some type of extortion thing. Like they have the goods on somebody and they're whatever. <laughs> it's got to be some type of extortion thing. Okay. So, but be, so that isn't how it works. You, it's not the money that's the power. See, they haven't figured it out fully. They don't understand what the whole, how this is working out. They don't get it. They don't get how it works. And the person that really doesn't get it is Obama. Like he's a first generation, you know, immigrant, you know, he's first generation. Like none of his grand grandparents, you know, none of his his fathers never, his grandfathers never lived here. 
So, so I believe that uh, him, and this is another strange thing about liberals. They like Hillary and Bernie Sanders, like they only have like, I mean, how many people do you have in your family? Like these two guys, these two only have like maybe 15, 10, 15 people that they know that they're related to. It's odd in the world. I mean, I'm related to a lot of people, a lot, but these guys are only related to like, like in their immediate family. It's like only like 15 people, 10 people, whatever, something like that. It was just odd, just an odd thing that was like, what? What? So it's just so strange. These people are strange. But yeah, they'll, they've never figured it out and they never will. So Dipwad Trudeau over here in Canada, he's just following Obama's direction. Okay. He's just following Obama's direction. Here, this is how you do it. See, none of that works. That book that they're taking all of their marching orders from, it doesn't work. Oh, oh yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Oh, well, well, we're going to be. No, no, you're not. It doesn't work. You've broken the laws. Now you're, and now you're just going to go to jail at the least, at the very least. Insane. Just some insane stuff. So Hillary's been photographed with the following people. Anthony Weiner, Harvey Weinstein, Broward County Sheriff. And now Eric Schneiderman. Check, 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 check. Check these off the list. These are swamp creatures. What a bunch of swampers, man. So, I think in the next episode, I'm going to dig further into this whole thing with Macron. I've said this before, the guy's likable, probably a nice guy, but the show is turning into a, a crap show. It's a crap storm. And if you think that, that my ancestors fought and died to build France, and Europe, and to see what these people are doing now, yeah, we're going to take it apart. We're taking it apart. So there it is. Contact me on Patreon, patreon.com slash childrick. Throw some coins in there for no reason, just because, just because. And also, also, you can find me on all types of social media, all types, Twitter, Gab, Mines, YouTube. Hit me up. Episode 36.